since you saw some of my expressive paintings, I'm going to show you some techniques that I learned from reading books and just from trying it. I'll start out, I usually start out with my palette knife and I make a background. So I scoop up some paint. As you can see, I got some paint here. And I did not tape my paper down. This is that really thick stuff we were talking about with the watercolors last week. And I didn't tape it down because I want to be able to turn it. Usually, I don't know why, but I end up, when I start a painting, I just, you can start yours however you like, but I like these big movements where I'm using my whole arm. I usually listen to music when I'm painting, and that also helps get your creativity flowing. I don't want to, I don't want to um, make it hard for you to hear on the video, but normally it's like in the art studio, I'll have something, some kind of music going on. So you're just choosing colors that are representing kind of what you're feeling. For blue, some people think blue is a sad color. Some people think that um, like it's kind of happy, like the color of the sky. It's up to you. And you're going to make any kind of marks you want. You can even, like I said, use your hand. So remember, when you're making an expressive painting, you're just going with your feelings. You don't have to, you don't have to feel like you got to explain yourself to anybody. You just have to go with it. There I wrap some um, plastic. I'll get the plastic a little bit wet. And I'm going to make smears, big marks. I don't know what this says about me today, but I want to make these marks. Maybe, maybe you think, oh, I just want to start over and with my day. Maybe you had a bad day and you want to start over. You're like, oh, I'll just smear it all up. I'll start new, wipe it fresh. Or you could be feeling angry. Um, and using, for me, like angry, I, I feel darker emotions. And so I use darker color. And I could be like, Taking out my mad anger at the paper. Nobody's judging you. It's all for you. Okay. It's okay to have mad feelings and take them out on a piece of paper. Now you can use the sticks for scratching tools. Or you could use them for stabbing tools. I'll get it a little bit wet. So you could also just go to town with this. If your paper's thick, you'll be all right. If your paper's thin, you're probably going to rip it. But sometimes I've seen artists um, have ripped stuff. So you can think, take out the frustrations on your paper. It's okay. Like I said, no judgment art it's not we're not gonna get arrested for taking out some feelings on some paper that's art there's no rules another thing that you can do with yours is you can use your hands now with the acrylic paint beware uh, it doesn't wash out so you're probably gonna want to wear a smock first in fact I'm gonna I'll edit that into the beginning So those are some more vigorous movements you can use. I'm, I usually sit because my, my light is kind of low, but a lot of people stand. If you have a messy wall, you can tape this to it. But I'm going to show you some more gentle marks that glide. And I'm going to turn my paper a little bit, show you what it looks like at this point.
So I've got sort of a broad bristle brush here. Broad means wide and it spreads wider marks of paint. You always need to get your brush a little bit, well, not always, but for this, you want your brush a little bit damp. You might want to squeeze off the extra, but leave it damp. And you can do smoother strokes. So you can take that and maybe just let it slap down onto the paper and kind of, you know, go with where it leads you. See what kind of marks you're making with your paint. It's all about expressing. To get my paint to flow a little better, I have some acrylic gel medium here, which we did not use at school. But it's just like, kind of like grease for your painting. It, it smooths out the paint and makes it flow better. So that's what you use the gel medium for. Maybe you want to make some marks across your page. You can see that some of my marks don't stay on the page. They go off onto my painting table. And if you're working at your house, you don't want your painting table or you don't want your kitchen table all messed up. So you got to kind of wash that up. But put down some newspaper first. That would be a good solution. It's more like craft paint. It's more watery and it doesn't mean it's bad. It just how it, it's just how it is. So with this, you might want to like hold it up above your painting and go give it a good like <clears throat> squirt like that. I hope you enjoy my sound effects. They're so great. Now with that, you can maybe you have a piece of styrofoam that you've saved from something or whatever you have it. And you cut it into pieces. You can cut your styrofoam into a tool. So I'm going to cut it so it has sort of comb, like a comb, teeth of a comb. See how I'm cutting notches in it? And we'll see what that does with our painting. Oops, I broke it a little bit. Let's see if we can still make it work. So I gave it like a really tiny comb. I can use my little comb. It's great. And oops, there went that little, what was that called? Oh, tooth of a comb, that little tooth pot. So you can do some scrapes and maybe you're feeling like so great and you're just like, Oh, feels good to paint. I'm a painter. I'm creative. Give yourself some positive self-talk. I'm a, I'm an artist. I can share my ideas with the world. Okay, so we have some of our homemade tool. Something that's fun to do. If you have a water bottle that has a squirter on it, this is an old hairspray container. I don't know why I'm shaking it, it's just water. You can hold your painting vertically and squirt. Now what's that gonna do? I don't know. That's what you need to do is experiment and find out. So I don't know if you can tell, but it is creating drips that are going down my painting. And it's kind of blending the colors real subtly that I put down already. Go on a scavenger hunt through your recycling bin and find a cap. I think I want orange in this. This is a really bright one. It's one of my the new ones that I got right before we got locked down. It's called Vivid Red Orange. So with the edge of the cap, I'm just going to lightly dip it in the, just dip the edge in that puddle of paint that I made and see what happens when I press down with it. It makes a prints of a circle. 